why power building is overrated. What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back with another video here with Dr. Pack. How you doing? My brother. So we're talking about a pretty contentious topic here, and that is power building, okay, the combination of trying to get stronger as well as build muscle. Let me just say it for you. It's overrated. Power building is highly overrated. And whoever says, or oh. so in walks a Kiwi King, he may or may not have a power building program. I may or may not have a power building program. Dr. Pat, why do you think it's overrated and overrated in what context? So I think in the traditional sense of power building, where you're doing a bunch of barbell compound lifts for four plus reps for multiple sets, that there's a better way to combine one repetition maximum strength training and general strength training, as well as hypertrophy without spending too much time or resources on the strength component. So you could be just doing a few very specific to one repetition maximum strength sets and then everything else in the sort of hypertrophy effective rep range. So to me, that sounds like power building. Well, let's make this distinction. So the classical exactly. definition of power building circa like 2014 would be either you're a five by five, three by five. So you would drive volume via the compound movements. So like if, if you're gonna make the case that power building is overrated, how are you defining power exactly. building in the overrated context? Yeah, so in the overrated context is something that you see often happen when people talk about power building because they have this general idea of strength strength being around the, you know, the five rep range. And I think a lot of that stems from your five by fives, your three by fives, et cetera. And then because they're chasing PRs and certain traditional barbell movements, you see them allocating a solid amount of their training volume to doing sets and sets of this sort of hybrid hypertrophy strength the rep range. And then they end up spending a lot of time doing a sort of bastardized version of strength training and then some hypertrophy training on top of it. When they could just go in do a couple of singles, maybe a back offset or two of just heavy work, and then the rest in the hypertrophy sort of zone. At what point does there become too much power in power building? One heavy top set is fine. That's not gonna interfere with your bodybuilding work, mm -hmm. but maybe three by five is too much. That's gonna take too long and detailed problem. Bodybuilding work that you could be doing, yeah. is that how you would argue that? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I would also argue that there is a slightly uh, misused definition of the word strength and what strength means because people often assume that if you're training in the like se 6 to 12 rep range that you're not going to get stronger you're just getting bigger when in reality you will not maximize one repetition maximum strength but sort of general strength will still go up in those hypertrophy ranges and by adding 6 maybe to 12 maximum sets of like low volume 1RM specific work that will be relatively time efficient singles, doubles, triples oh baby And as we've seen as well with the RPE data as well, that could be relatively lower RPE than people are used to. You're covered and potentially looking at really, really solid one repetition maximum specific uh, strength gains, and then you can do all your hypertrophy stuff. So your argument is basically it's not the most time efficient way to train for bodybuilding. What if you have someone who has all the time in the world? I would argue also that from a specificity standpoint, you going and doing sets of five for your bench and your squat and your deadlift thinking that, oh, this is the strength part of the workout. If you're doing singles and maybe like doubles or triples, really mimicking essentially the one room just maximum strength test, you may be looking at better gains. So it's the rep range that makes it suboptimal. So there's a, there's a time factor, which I would concede, it mm -hmm. is less time efficient. Then there's the- Specificity. Are low reps less hypertrophic than higher reps? So that seems to be the, the next point you've turned to. But we have research showing that you can achieve hypertrophy with low reps, as well as moderate reps, as well as high reps. So yeah. what's your problem with low reps in that context? But yeah. you're also, you're only addressing the bodybuilding goals. If I'm power building, I want the strength component. Okay. So why would I do fives right. if I can do singles and That's take the, yeah, take the strength component much more efficiently right. and then all my hypertrophy work, five plus reps. Oh, sure. Because like a program that is like five, if you're doing five reps, that's essentially hypertrophy work. You get me? Yeah. From a strength standpoint, what you're saying, Pac, is that programming where you're doing like a three by five as opposed to like top single back off, maybe mm. a triple, is uh, not as good for getting stronger. So that component is actually suboptimal because strength is a skill that must be expressed at a particular like movement. You're trying to get a one rep max. So it's inefficient from both a time and effort standpoint to do like a three by five versus a top single and a back down with like three reps. 
it's just a different way of defining power building. Give me your hand up. And one thing I'd say is also, but uh, gents, we should define in what context. For people, let's say if your coefficient's around 300 to 400, it will work to a point. But I think the argument is that if people want to combine it, is that it becomes not only in, inefficient, but improbable of achieving both goals at once. Meaning that if you're very, very strong, you'll have to concede something at some point. Where do you actually think that though? Like, do you think that you have to concede For strength, something? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll speak from the strength standpoint, I think so. There's a time cost perspective, and then there's also like strength being a skill that you're not training that quality, which is like, you know, you need to uh, work up the top singles and so on and so forth to get it. Then like, you'll need a band, something you'll have to jettison at some point. For the, the people that want to get specifically strong at specific lifts, the way to, and one repetition maximum strength specifically, the way to go there, if you want to combine that with hypertrophy, in my opinion, would be minimum dose, very highly specific training, where you're training and you're practicing for the test and then the rest hypertrophy. If you just want to get generally strong, yeah. cool, bro. Five plus reps on everything and you're going to get there. So just to make my, for the, yeah, yeah. my scenes on as a cleaver, uh, I think that if you have purely bodybuilding goals, yeah. there's no reason that you need to squat yeah. bench and deadlift. I think we would all agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. So like anyone trying to say like power building is definitely the best way to build the best physique, that's overrated. I would right. agree with that. And I would say that for people who are more time limited, there are more efficient ways to train for hypertrophy than power building for sure. I would agree with that. But I also think that power building is a perfectly viable way to train for a bodybuilder who's motivated by it. And it doesn't impede your progress enough no. to call it overrated in that context. That would be my stance. Do you agree with that? Or is there anything there you disagree? No, no, fully agree. Yeah. So the, the one assumption I think baked into that that I do agree upon is that let's say if you were to do once again big three because it's time to warm up and this and that and you like it and your, but your goals are more purely oriented towards hypertrophy that just the quality of training would need to remain high so i think your over i would put forth that your overall motivation because there is a psychological component of doing like you know, a squat first like yeah, the hack squat we could argue about that that i think you need to be a motivated individual for the end result to be there and i do think if you want a real name i'm joking shout out elaine norton original power builder but just the idea that like you need to ensure that the quality of the training throughout the entirety of the workout remains high. It's been my general observation of just everyone that let's say the first half of your workout, you're more dedicated towards. And that's why the accessories, the second half, it's not that the program's wrong, or if one was to do it correctly, that they uh, wouldn't achieve results. But sometimes if one is to cut corners, it's in that latter half. So conceptually, it makes sense. So there is a trope, Jeff, in the space that training power building, right? So we're, again, emphasis first on kind of getting better at these movements, but also getting bigger, um, that it doesn't train your arms enough or you won't develop a physique as if, uh, instead of being purely hypertrophy oriented. But what would be your response to that? I think that that does happen with people who are more focused on the powerlifting side than the bodybuilding side. Yep. And so it's just a matter of emphasis. Like it's just more important to them that they're stronger. But if they were like, oh, it's just as important to me to have developed rear delts as it is to have a big deadlift, then you just have to figure out a way to psychologically prioritize that yeah. for yourself, which is probably just track it, like track your progression and stop skipping the accessories. Like it's a mental thing. What would be some general takeaway points for the audience? Power building is not overrated, but oh. no, 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 honestly, yeah. it's not overrated, <laughs> but rather how you define power building may make it not it for your goals. I think it's about to be underrated in 2024. And what I mean when I say that is I'm sick and tired of this old man yelling in the clouds, the TikTok gender of like these uh, kids that they will eschew doing like a, a genuinely, objectively, uh, definably a harder exercise. So let's say like a squat. And then you'll see them like, it's not that the hack squat's a great movement, but they'll do like 30 reps and like they're shit because it's great for like IG, it's great for like TikTok. Certain movements that I think are falling out of favor that are perfectly serviceable. So it, de it depends upon who the audience is. For my audience, is power building overrated or underrated? I think like it's great. And I think in some ways it could be defined as being overrated as we said. I think to like a TikToker and again, like, wow, you're old Omar, it could be underrated. Yeah. I still think. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's all shake hands simultaneously. <laughs> bring it in, bring it We're in. We're united in Ben squat deadlift. Thank so, you. Hey, uh, can I tell you something? I didn't get your name. You look like this guy that's on YouTube called Jeff Nippert. Have I ever told you that? Hey man, oh yeah, this is in the flesh, in the flesh. The Mr. Beast trainer. Uh, so Jeff, where can people find you? No, come on. You already know. If you don't know, you're not watching the good shit. On this ladder, up here, holding it down at Friday at 3 a.m. New book out soon. Bro!
Yeah, where can people find you? Yeah, uh, come on, man. YouTube channel. You know this is coming out now, so like YouTube channel. So we got uh, the Instagram, we got the YouTube. We'll link it all down below. Thank you so much for watching another video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. It's usually about us here. World's strongest power lifter. Aside from raising a lot of weight, I also like to raise men's confidence with style. Inside every man, there's an even bigger man. You're watching Strong Guy for the Buff Guy, the new hit show on Netflix. We've got a tough one today. Is Jesus up for the challenge? Hey, I'm Michael, I'm 27, and my gym fits are whack. That green color man ain't right for your skin tone. That oversized tee, I'm already over it. For your first look, man, we're gonna do something fierce. All right, let's do it. All right, Michael. How you feeling, bro? I don't know, man. Feels like a lot of skin. Michael, for this next look, I will really need you to bring out that vulnerability. Okay. Me I don't know, man. Crop tops? Slow out of my comfort zone. Michael, who are you before the world told you who you were? Michael's this big, beautiful butterfly. I think it's time we spread those wings. Michael, scratch that. Mikey, you just set off a hunk of one. You know what? I didn't think I could pull off a pastel pink, but you were right. With Michael's newfound confidence in his brand new drip, it's time to test out a new PR. Will his new threads help him overcome his fears? Who's my little tough guy? Me. <laughs> Another man saved. Tune in next week when Jesus answers your questions. Nah, trust me. Based off your voice, definitely a lavender and mauve type of guy.